Uh, Memorial Day. 2022. Memorial Day. This is a day here in America where our Jesuit government puts on the facade to honor those poor martyrs for this Jesuit Roman Catholic government of ours here in America. Yesterday is a day that we as Americans are to honor those who died for the Vatican. Usually here in Illinois, it rains on Memorial Day. Um, the winds are boisterous, but it's sunny right now. We're supposed to have a nice warm day today. Hmm. But yes, yes, Memorial Day. And um, I do think often often on this day, on, on this day, throughout the day. You know, you look at the Vietnam War, the Gulf War. Um, <laughs> those were all, I mean, you, you read the book by um, Avril Manhattan about and stuff like that about the um, Vatican and their money and why did we go to Vietnam and the, um, the he who controls the oil controls the world kind of thing over in the Gulf War. It's interesting, um, the Gulf War Syndrome. There was a video game that was put out a while ago called Metal Gear Solid. And in that video game, they put off the idea that the Gulf War Syndrome was by people being injected with the genome something or other. Um, that's actually, strangely, oddly enough, from a video game more uh, more closer to the truth about the um, Gulf War syndrome than what we are told. America is a Jesuit nation and the men and women who died in service for this nation it's sad because our nation has sold out to the Vatican Long ago, long ago. Somber day. Somber day. You know, when it comes to YouTube comments, okay, I rarely, if ever, comment on videos. Rarely, if ever. I will comment on Brethren videos. Um, I watch videos by the Brethren. I watch the videos and listen to them. We sit in our living room and watch them. Me and my wife, you know, we, we watch videos by the brethren. We absolutely do. We don't, I don't always comment. Um, it's rare. It's rare. But I, I will comment on brethren's videos. And every once in a while, uh, usually from my best friend, who will send me a link about something and it'll just grieve me and... Uh, I'll make a comment, but then I'll quickly delete it because it's like, eh, because, uh, you know, <laughs> a lot of the times, brethren, in comments, when we see, come across heresy and those who believe uh, some pretty insane things, some of our comments are like more or less casting pearls before swine, okay? But recently, <laughs> recently, okay, I figured, ah, you know, why not? I, I came across this channel called Cody Resilient. Yeah, Cody Resilient. This Cody Resilient was, is apparently from the streets and um, was homeless. And uh, I personally have a lot of experience working with the homeless people and witnessing onto homeless people. And um, I came across this uh, young man's channel. And um, right away I saw uh, problems because um, he promotes Rick Warren's 40 Days of Purpose. It's like, oh boy, oh boy. I gave a uh, listen to a couple of his videos and I left 
some comments on a couple of his videos. And, um, <laughs> right, like I said, right away, it's like, oh, you're supporting Rick Warren and how to get money God's way. It's like, oh, boy, kid, you poor, poor, uh, <laughs> bless your heart. <laughs> and I mean that in the Southern way, too. Okay. <laughs> but, um. He uploaded a video asking about Ray Comfort. And of course, Ray Comfort. So I know some stuff about Ray Comfort, and I put a comment on that video warning it's like, hey, Roy, Ray Comfort, he's Calvinist. He teaches true Lordship salvation that you clean up your life first and repent of your sins, and then you go to the Lord and he gives you repentance. Um, and also, Ray Comfort, just like Paul Washer, um, tiptoes very close to the edge of sinless perfection. Very close. Uh, Ray Comfort is a heretic. Stay away from him. Um, he sounds good. He sure does, but ah, no, no. What about holiness? What about holiness? You've got to repent of all your sins. Yeah, okay, sure. And I made that aware in the comment, and I also in this comment on that video of his, put remember, okay, <laughs> remember. Repentance is not repenting of your sin, meaning like you clean up your life first. You, you couldn't clean up your life on your own and then go to the Lord at gunpoint. You couldn't do it. You can't. Oh, you can go through the 12-step program and have a changed life, but you can't clean up your own life and then go to Christ. It doesn't work that way. The repentance is repenting of your self-righteousness. Okay? That is what the scriptures preach and teach for this dispensation. That is what I preach and teach for this dispensation. And, and uh, I deleted all my comments on this this young man's channel. I did. It is because casting pearls before swine. <laughs> it really is. And um, he responded to me. It's like, you obviously haven't been, you are, or what was it? You obviously aren't from the streets. Okay. And then he said, it's the love of God that brings people to salvation, not the fear of hell. Yeah. Okay. You know, I've known of people like a dearly, dearly beloved who would do um, online tracting, you know, go to a, a video and just type some scripture and you'll see the hatred for the true gospel, repentance towards God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ, um, the fear of the Lord. Okay. Fear of the Lord. All right. So when this young man responded like that, I'm like, <laughs> I didn't. I was like, okay, kid. Okay. Bless your heart. Yeah. Okay, kid. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I deleted my comments and it's like, okay, I'm. <laughs> yes. Yeah, see what happens. <laughs> but is it fear or is it love? What is the love of God? What is the love of God? We're going to address that in this video. Uh, but I want to address this arrogance and pride by this boy from the streets who was homeless. Was homeless, yeah. But see, the way he said that, I mean, that was the first thing of his, whatever he wanted to call it, okay, you're obviously not from the streets. Well, no, I'm not. So, but see what he's doing is, and I've encountered this with the black Hebrew Israelites, and as our um, uh, Hemetic brother himself has uh, made comment to me, it's like, yeah, a lot, a lot of my people have that in them. You know, well, you're, you don't have the black experience. And he's, he's a southern boy. 
He's the first one to tell you. <laughs> okay, he's a southern boy. <laughs> but uh, he, you know, it's like a lot. Uh, and this was coming from a Hamite. He was saying, yeah, a lot of my, uh, a lot of my kindred. And it's like, well, you don't. Who are you to talk to me if you're of Japheth, white, or something like that? Uh, who are you to talk to me? You don't have the Hamite experience. Quote, unquote. So, because I wasn't from the streets, I have no, I have no right to speak to him or speak anything on to him because I'm not from, I'm not on his level. You see, it's a twisting of the esoteric mentality. Esoteric. Those for uh, information, doctrine for the in crowd. Exoteric. Information, doctrine for the general public. So what this young man did, bless his heart, <laughs> in the southern way, um, what he did, basically did was put himself in his, the fact that, well, you're not from the streets, what do you know? Implying that because I'm not from the streets, I had no right to say anything to him. And obviously he was a supporter of Ray Comfort or of true lordship salvation, that he cleaned up his life and then he went to Christ or something. I don't know. I don't know. But his comment was very telling. And on that, please, turn with me in the authorized version of the scriptures. Follow me along word for word, verse by verse, as we go through the scriptures today. Okay, please. Please. Um, this week, Lord willing, um, things are still not going good for my wife, still not going that good. Up and then down, up and then down. Yesterday turned out to be, started out as a good day, but please keep my wife in your prayers. Please keep us in your prayers. Boy, we need it. But I want to address this part of it. This week, Lord willing, we'll see how this week goes. I'm going to be addressing questions and certain things like that. Um, I've got some big videos coming. Uh, uh, look forward to a video on the difference between covenant and testament. Thank you, brother. But um, 1 Corinthians chapter 9. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, uh, verses 19 on to verse 23. Follow me along, word for word, verse by verse, in the authorized version of the scriptures. Check me out. Follow me along. Make sure I'm not skipping a groove. Make sure I'm not lying to you. Make sure I'm telling you the truth. Okay? Follow me along. Please. 1 Corinthians chapter 9. So because I wasn't of the streets, hence I had no right to speak about someone. Obviously, this, this um, young man, bless his heart, um, thought quite highly of Mr. Ray Comfort. Hmm. Yeah. 1 Corinthians 9, verses 19 on verse 23. For though I be free from all men, free from all men, yeah, yet have I made myself servant unto all that I might gain the more. And unto the Jews I became as a Jew that I might gain the Jews. Um, Paul is a Hebrew of the Hebrew. He was a Jew. So what does he mean there? Um, those who were keeping the ordinances and stuff like that. Okay? Stuff like that. All right? To them that are under the law. Under the law, not saved. That you're under the law. We are under the law to Christ, yes. But um, the law was made for what? Disobedient, sinful man. Right? You read about that in, what is that, uh, 1 Timothy? Or first or second Timothy, one of the two. But the law was made for whoremongers. And let's go there. Let's go there. Uh, this is a little impromptu. Got some notes here. Uh, a little impromptu. This is this is just something that's like you know, you try to try to reach out to people. <laughs> yes, First Timothy chapter one, verses eight, on to verse. 10. But we know that the law, law of Moses, 
is good if a man use it lawfully. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man. Because the law was our schoolmaster to bring us on to Christ. The law was to show us that at our best we are vanity and we can't keep the right ways of God even if we were held at gunpoint. Okay? But yet, because I'm not of your demographic or haven't been through your personal experience, that means I, I have no ground to speak to you of these things. <laughs> Bless your heart, boy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> um take the boy out of Dixieland, but you never take the Dixie out of the boy, huh? Were you rescued from the hood there, boy? <laughs> Bless your heart. <laughs> yeah. Knowing this, that the law is not made for a righteous man, but for the lawless and disobedient, for the ungodly and sinners, for unholy and profane, for murderers of fathers and murderers of mothers, for manslayers, for whoremongers, for them that defile themselves with mankind, for men stealers, for liars, for perjured, perjured persons, and if there be any other thing that is contrary to sound doctrine. Hmm. Okay. The purpose of the law was to bring us, was a schoolmaster to bring us unto Christ. And of course, now that we who are saved of the Church of God, which is the Church of the Living God, that doesn't mean that we go about <laughs> living by our feelings. You know, this we, we've dealt with this when talking about a certain wicked witch, uh, Diana of the Ephesians, who are teaching these people to, you know, trust in your feelings. Go to them to discern which uh, spirit is talking to you. Uh, no, no. Uh, we have commandments today uh, as the Church of God in this dispensation for us. In Romans chapter 13... Uh, verses 8 on to verse 10. Uh, let's, 8 on to verse 11. Owe no man anything. Don't, don't be in debt. Don't be in debt. But to love one another. For he that loveth another hath fulfilled the law. For this thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not kill. Thou shalt not steal. So, see, Paul's making reference to this today for us in this dispensation means it's still valid, okay? But there are some things missing. Like what? Well, uh, thou shalt not bear false witness. If you're not reading the authorized version of the scriptures, thou shalt not bear false witness, it's not in there, is it? No, it isn't. Could it be because your Bible, which there's a difference between a Bible and the scriptures? Big difference. Um, could it be because your Bible is lying to you? What a shock. Because guess what? They come from the Vatican. Rome, traceable onto Alexandria, Egypt. This is traceable onto Syria. Okay? Different, different topic, but. For this thou shalt not commit adultery, thou shalt not kill, thou shalt not steal, thou shalt not bear false witness, thou shalt not covet. And if there be any other commandment, it is briefly comprehended in this saying, namely, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. <laughs> love thy neighbor as thyself is referring to, you know, for an example, we have new neighbors that moved in across from us. The very first day, uh, they grilled outside, which they weren't supposed to do, being loud and obnoxious, going over, you know, our little area here. And we live in an apartment, but it's like, yeah. And we, you know, respecting, loving our neighbors by being quiet. That kind of thing. Do unto others as you would do have them do unto you. Because a very good point that I want to bring up, that a brother, a friend, my best friend brought up, <laughs> You, you, you don't want me loving you like I love myself. Because I tend to be my own worst critic. And also my wife. <laughs> Praise the Lord, you know. And, <laughs> but yeah, you don't want me loving you the way I love myself. I'm very hard on myself. And... Um, Beat my, not physically, but beat myself up sometimes. Not physically. 
you know, so, no, but the love your neighbor as yourself, you know, do unto others as you would have them do unto you, you know, be respectful unto your neighbors, that kind of thing, okay, tell your neighbors the truth, because I want to be told truth, see, we are all, from the minute we're brought into this lovely world, we're lied to, and those who will be be without, be outside of heaven, are those who loveth and maketh a lie. Deck the halls with balls of frolly, fra la la la. <clears throat> Excuse me. Excuse me. We'll talk about that much later at the appropriate season. But love worketh no ill to his friend neighbor. Therefore, love is the fulfilling of the law. What is love, right? Okay, go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 9. Rereading re verse 20. And unto the Jews I became as a Jew, that I might gain the Jews. To them that are under the law, as under the law, that I might gain them that are under the law. To them that are without law, as without law. Not Being not without law to God, but under the law to Christ, which we already looked at that I might gain them that are without the law, without law. Hmm. To the weak became I as weak, that I might gain the weak. I am made all things to all men, that I might by all means save some. Hmm. And this I do for the gospel's sake, that I might be partaker thereof with you. Hmm. So, okay. According to what this young man, bless his heart, his logic was, because I wasn't from the street, I had no right to speak to him, to bash the heretic with comfort, and to speak what true repentance is. So, with that mentality, so then Paul, because he wasn't, say, a sodomite, had no right to preach the gospel unto a sodomite, huh? Because I'm of Japheth and white, I have no right to speak unto a Hamite who is black because I, I'm not one of them, right? So because I'm not from the streets, I have no right to speak to those. Bless your heart. Bless your heart. Yeah, bless your heart. First Corinthians chapter one. First Corinthians chapter one. See, I have a lot of experience with homeless people. Why? I, no, I have not been homeless yet. Okay, yet. You never know. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> Having food and raiment, let us be there with content. This is a luxury. Okay. I have a lot of experience. A lot of experience with working and dealing with the homeless. No, I was never homeless myself. No, no. But I've spent a lot of time with the homeless. Now, granted, I don't know what it's like, but I've heard their stories. They've cried on my shoulder and snotted on me, okay? I've had fellowship with the homeless, okay? Well, that no, that does not make me an expert. But then again, that does not make me ignorant. See. But see, what that is, what this young man did, was putting himself on another level than myself. Okay? And see, right away, when we think of people doing that, we think of the elitists, the esoteric. You know, I'm up here and you're down there. And we always think of uh, the rich and the successful. You know, those who are building their petty little kingdoms on their multiple properties and all that kind of stuff. And have their big mansions and stuff in their cars. You know, and yeah, yeah, that, that, yeah, that, that fits. But it, it's not relegated just to that, Okay. Like I said, like the one brother, you know, the black experience. You don't have the black experience. You, you know, you're not black, so you shouldn't, you can't be talking to me because you're not one of us. That's foolish. That's pride. 
That's pride. And I tell you, um, if the Lord would have, and I have, you know, I have, you know. I know there are some out there who would not, being of Japheth, would not go to preach unto a Hamite. Or those of Shem, especially of Shem. Especially of Shem. And the time coming has everything to do with the Hebrew, which derives from Shem. Okay? But yeah, I know of some people that it's like, well, they don't want me there and I'm not going to go there. Okay, what if the Lord would, well, the Lord would only send me to my own kindred. <laughs> okay. 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 Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verses 26 on to verse 29. For ye see your calling, brethren, how that not many wise men after the flesh, not many mighty, not many noble are called. It says not many, not that they aren't going to be called. Why? Because they have a greater temptation to, be self, to fall into the pride of self-sufficiency rather than Christ's dependence. Okay? But God hath chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise. And God hath chosen the weak things of the world to confound the things which are mighty. And you think right away, well, what about the homeless? Wow. One second. And base things of the world and things which are despised hath God chosen. Yea, and things which are not to bring to naught things that are. Why? Why? Verse 29 that no flesh should glory in his presence. And this young man was glorying in the flesh. I'm from the streets. You're not. <laughs> so then I have no right to speak anything to you. <laughs> okay, boy. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but you would think, around the homeless, and I've seen, I've seen this, I've seen this a lot. Homeless people can be quite broken of themselves. Absolutely. They've lost everything. Dependent on drugs, whatever, alcohol. Okay? They could have godly sorrow. They really can. But a lot of the times that godly sorrow is still turned to a fret inward rather than outward, meaning that I'm so sorry for what I did to you, <coughs> but I'm so this, that, and the other thing. <coughs> Their um, self-loathing self can become a source of pride. Self-abasement. Got to be careful with this. And I've seen this in many homeless people. Self-abasement can become a form of self-exaltation, um, okay? But I've seen it. But what happens is they come short. And this is, this is how it is with a lot of these false converts. They come, they, 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 they get their little tootsies right here to the edge. But that edge that they need to fall off, it's the fear of the Lord. It's the fear of the Lord. And when you got when you're supporting people like Rick Warren, dude. Dude. Young man, you're not watching this because you you know, you're from the streets. You you got your own little subgenre. Go ahead. Good for you. But uh, you came to the Lord not because I feared him, because of the love. You're not saved. You're not saved. If in your salvation there was absolutely no fear of the Lord, no fear at all, it, it, you know, well, I cried out because of the love. You cry out to the Lord because you are afraid of him. Because number one, you're broken. Number two, you have godly sorrow because it's your fault. And number three, see, brokenness and godly sorrow will lead to the fear of the Lord because he's going to send you to hell unless he save you. 
Okay? And see what these people do. They'll get the little tootsies to right there with brokenness and even contrition, but the fear of the Lord. How are you? Yeah, and, and see, this is the product of Christianity. To love them into the kingdom. Preach the love of God. The love of God is Christ in him crucified. The love of God is Jesus Christ's death, burial, and resurrection. Blood is shed on the cross. That's the love of God. But see, when they say the love of God, don't bring up my sin. Don't judge me. Right? 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 They get their little tootsies to that edge, but then they don't have the fear of the Lord. Why? Why is that? I'll tell you why. John chapter, thank you, Lord. John chapter six, verses twenty-six on to verse twenty-seven. Here's the problem. Because you have Christianity. Telling them, God loves you. God's not mad at you. God's not judging you. If you reject the gospel, the true gospel, you are a child of wrath. You are a child of disobedience. God's love is not for you. God's love is at Calvary. You have to go there on his terms to get the love of God. Okay? Oh, oh no, don't, don't worry. We're, we're going to be looking at your precious little John 3.16. Don't worry about that. Okay? But... The love of God is Christ and him crucified. Christ and him crucified. That's the love of God. Not this sappy, sh sugary, saccharine, sweet, bro hug thing. That's not the love of God. That's the religion of Antichrist. That is the Antichrist religion. That spirit of antichrist okay the antichrist religion is god loves you god's not mad at you god's not judging you love him into the kingdom and when that man of sin the son of perdition appears on the scene it's going to begin with love and by peace destroy many preaching peace peace and there is no peace you're not saved I've encountered many of these people who said they're saved because of the love. And, and we're, we're going to go over these verses, but where's the fear of the Lord? How are you supposed to love someone that you're afraid of? Contrary. How are you to love someone that you're not afraid of? And see, I'd like to give you the example of, you know, a, a, a child who is, f loves their father and mother, but they're afraid of their father because their father will get the belt out and whoop them on the rear end if they've done wrong. But see, the generations that have come here to four, today is the 30th. Have you read the 30th proverb for today? Hmm? I'd like to use that as an example. And yesteryear, children, they loved their father and their mother, but they were a skirt of their father because if they did wrong, he, they knew that their father would say, okay, you go out there, boy, and you pick yourself a twitch so I can whoop your rear end. Or the, uh, the, the father look at the, the son or the daughter, so like, give him that look, that look that says, you do that one more time, I'm going to take you into that bathroom and put you over my knee and smack your rear end until it's raw. Okay? But see, nowadays, and this has been for almost, what, the past 70 years maybe? Maybe. Maybe. That might be a little off. But here in America, okay, a uh, father smacks his, his child on the rear end. That's abuse. And they can have the father or the mother put in jail because of it. And because, because America is a nation run by the Jesuits, children are their oppressors. This is Isaiah chapter 5. Children are their oppressors and women rule over them. 
I would like to give you that example. But see, a lot of the people that we are encountering today, brethren, are from that generation that are don't honor their father or mother. That generation that were raised only by either a mother or either a father, a single parent. Okay? Because in Proverbs chapter 30, and this was written thousands of years ago, but it's very pertinent for today. Gen uh, Genesis, Proverbs chapter 30, verses 11 on to verse 16. No, on to verse 17. There is a generation that curseth their father and doth not bless their mother. There is a generation that are pure in their own eyes and yet is not washed from their filthiness. Yeah, because they're given everything they want. They're, they want. They are coddled to, uh, you know, the parents want to live vicariously through their children that they have everything that I didn't when I was growing up. And they make little idols out of them. They go to their baseball games and lock, uh, uh, threaten the referees with guns, literally. And say, yeah. And we wonder why, why the generation, the children of today are so... Hoo, hoo, hoo. Every once in a while, though, every once in a while, you will run across some that are actually trained, brought up right. But it is... <laughs> it's like a tenth out of, on a scale from one to ten. Okay? Yes. There's a generation that are pure in their own eyes, and yet is not washed from their filthiness. There is a generation, oh, how lofty are their eyes. Lofty. Look up. Arrogant. And their eyelids are lifted up. There is a generation whose teeth are as swords, and their jaw teeth as knives. Hmm. People think it's cute to see a five-year-old little girl using the F-bomb. Hearing, uh, what was it, a seven-year-old boy using the C-word? I think he was seven years old. <laughs> and it, and the, the adults laughing, <laughs> that's cute. I'd smack the yellow off that boy's teeth. But no, it's cute. It's cute. Yeah. Yeah. There's a generation whose teeth are as swords and their jaw teeth as knives to devour the poor from off the earth and the needy from among men. The horse leech hath two daughters crying, Give! Give! There are three things that are never satisfied. Yea, four things to say not. It is enough. The grave. The barren womb. The earth that is not filled with water. And the fire that saith not. It is enough. The eye that mocketh at his father. And despiseth to obey his mother. The ravens of the valley shall pick it out. And the young eagles shall eat it. So when a generation of young men, young women are brought up without fear of the Lord, without even fearing their father or mother, it's no wonder that they can be just tiptoe so close to, the, to that point of true salvation, but fall short at the fear of the Lord. And why is that? John chapter 6, you thought I forgot, didn't you? Verses 26 on to verse 27. Jesus answered them and said, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Ye seek me, not because ye saw the miracles, but because ye did eat of the loaves and were filled. You sought Christ only for worldly gain. Well, what's wrong with that? Um, everything. This, this is not it. Having food and raiment, let us be there with content. Paul knew how to abound and how to be abased. Okay? This, these four walls are luxury. Not a necessity. Praise the Lord that he has allowed us to live here. Praise the Lord for it. 
<laughs> my wife being homeless would kill her. Okay? But having food and raiment, let us be there with content. You come to the Lord because you are guilty. You are sorry. And you fear Him. You're afraid. The fear of the Lord, that is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. Okay? Labor not for the meat which perisheth, but for that which but for that meat which endureth unto everlasting life, which the Son of Man shall give unto you, for him hath God the Father sealed. Hmm. And see, in Deuteronomy chapter 13, go there please, of course, please. Deuteronomy chapter 13, verses 100, verse 4. We, we've talked about this before, but, you know, the closer we're getting to the redemption of the purchased possession, brethren, these Christians, spirit, spirit, spirituality thing is just going, mm. it's getting worse and worse every day. But Deuteronomy chapter 13, verses 1 and verse 4. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and giveth thee a sign or a wonder, like a changed life, hey, I've changed my life, huh? I, Lord did this for me, yeah. But you don't fear the Lord. You came to him because of the love. No. 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 You're not saved. If there's no fear of the Lord at salvation, you're not saved. And see, easy believism. Just believe. Skipping over true scriptural repentance, which is brokenness of self-righteousness. True godly sorrow, it's your fault. And of course, calling on the name of the Lord, the lesser calling on the greater. They're all about that. See, this young Cody uh, resilient that I uh, encountered um, is basically easy believism. With the flavor of True lordship salvation, apparently. Very sad. Bless his heart. And the sign and, and the sign of the wonder come to pass, whereof he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods. The love them into the kingdom, the ecumenical thing, yeah. The veil of ecumenicalism, yeah which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or of that dreamer of dreams. For the Lord your God proveth you to know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Ye shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice. And ye shall serve him and cleave on to him. Yes. Fear the Lord. Fear the Lord. Oh, that's Old Testament, huh? Well, uh, you guys like to go to the New Testament, especially before the death, burial, and resurrection, which doctrinally was um, still the Old Testament. Instruction and in righteousness. See, instruction and in righteousness is instructing us how to live godly within the present dispensation. Doctrine is how to be right with God within the current dispensation. Okay? Okay? And there are doctrines that cross dispensational lines. Yes, there are. Okay? But that's the difference between instruction and righteousness and doctrine. Okay? But, uh, okay, uh, Luke chapter 12, just one verse. Just one verse, Luke chapter 12, verse 5. But I will forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him, which after he hath killed, hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. Oh, he's talking about God the Father. Jesus is the Father. Okay? Uh, and besides, you might say, well, Jesus is not talking about himself. Uh, dear friend, have you read the book of Revelation out of the scriptures where our Lord's talking about, I will kill the, her children with death? I will remove your candlestick out of its place unless you repent. Huh? 
And see, that's that's a conundrum for a lot of these uh, <laughs> modern Christians, okay, who go off solely off the red words. You get to the red. Well, I, my this Cambridge doesn't have red words in Revelation, but most sets of scriptures, uh, red words in the Book of Revelation. It's like it's, and I've heard it from them. It's like it's it's like two totally different Jesuses. When he came here before the death, burial, and resurrection, he came as the lamb to take away the sin of the world, to be offered. God shall provide himself a lamb. Himself a lamb. All the Bibles get that messed up. The scriptures get it right. Okay, God shall provide himself a lamb. Okay, He came as the lamb offering the kingdom of heaven with him as king ruling at Jerusalem unto the Jews. When he come back, he's going to come back as the lion of the tribe of Judah. And he's going to give unto every man according to his deeds. Okay? Same God. Listen. The God of the Old Testament is the God of the New Testament. One God, okay, who is comprised of spirit, Holy Ghost, soul, God the Father, body the word made flesh okay spirit soul and body or body soul spirit people say that backers it drives me crazy scripturally it's spirit soul and body but well, it's small thing small thing okay jesus is the father okay okay he's referring to himself he's referring to himself why didn't he say fear me Don't know. But when you compare scripture with scripture different. You, you, you Christian. You think you're going to. At, at the <laughs> judgment seat of Christ. Go up to bro hug. Hey Jesus. Come on. Come on dog. Or come on yo. <laughs> Whatever you want to say. In your <laughs> street dialect. And John the apostle. Whom Jesus loved. Fell at his feet as dead. And you're going to talk to the Lord Jesus Christ as if he's your homie? Maybe you shouldn't have quit smoking that stuff. Maybe you shouldn't have. But see, this is indicative to so many of these Christians that we will encounter. They, and they all have flavors of the, the three C's. Catholic, Calvinist, or Charismatic. Okay? <laughs> but they, the love of God. The love of God is Christ and Him crucified. The love of God that these people are talking about is a love that doesn't judge. Okay? And a love that is okay with sin. Come as you are. Come as you are. Come broken. Come as you are. See, come as you, you are. The underlying teaching there is come just as you are without any change, without any repentance, without any brokenness. That's what that means. The underlying meaning. But here, here's... here's <laughs> And, and brethren, uh, Church of the Living God, uh, please bear with me. Please. John chapter 3. We got to preach the love of God. Love them into the kingdom. The love you're preaching is hate. Because perfect love is a love that tells truth. Perfect love is a love that's willing to hurt you in order that you might be made better. But, okay, let's go to John chapter 3. But let's read from verses 14 on to verse 21. John chapter 3. There is a place for John chapter 3, verse 16, in your gospel presentation. There is. But the gospel is not John 3, 16. It is not. It is not. 
And as Moses, uh, John 3, verses 14 on to verse 21. And as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, even so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have eternal life. Number one, this is before the death, burial, and resurrection. Number two, this is still doctrinally under the law in the Old Testament. Okay? He had not died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. Okay? When did the New Testament begin? Read Hebrews chapter 9. We'll leave it at that. Okay? And number three, he was offering the kingdom of heaven, the thousand year reign of, as him as king, unto the Jews. Okay? You got to remember that. But, okay, John 3.16. Now, let's pay attention. Okay? For God so loved. To my knowledge, not even in a Bible, such as a Bible is an NIV, ESV, uh, NKJV, uh, NLT, uh, NASB, the mess, the NRSV, the RV, the NAB, <laughs> the cuckoo, <laughs> okay? That, those are Bibles. King James Version, these are the scriptures, okay? But to my knowledge, not even the Dewey Reams, there is not even a Bible out there that says God so loves the world, okay? Look up loves in the scriptures. I believe it only appears three times. And the context where loves has no context with God, present tense, loving the lost sinner. God's love is at Calvary. But you got to go to him on his terms, not booting the door out of the way, dear friend. Okay? But, for God so loved, loved. Now, I'm a, I'm a drop out of high school. I never actually went to high school. I dropped out at, uh, what, 7th or 8th grade, okay? But for God so loved, that's called the past tense. For God so loved the world that he gave, also past tense, within context, his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. And this, he was talking to Nicodemus, who was apparently a ruler of the Jews, okay? But this was also spoken before the death, burial, and resurrection. Doctrinally still under the law, doctrinally still in the Old Testament, okay? For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already. Hmm. Well, you say, well, I believe. Yeah. Thou believest there is one God, thou doest well. The, the devils also believe. I tremble. James 2, 19. He that believeth on him is not condemned. But he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And this is the condemnation, that light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light, neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest, that they are wrought in God. And see, someone who is legitimately broken, and does have godly sorrow, but yet, there's no fear of the Lord there. They're still not coming to the light that they're... See, the light that they are seeking, and the capital L light, our Lord Jesus Christ, okay? Remember, Satan himself is also transformed as an angel of light. you got to remember that. But that light, which is our Lord Jesus Christ, which is shining on them, to, you know, in their broken and contrite state, but yet having no fear of the Lord, they're still in darkness, because, well, okay, they might be broken, but yet no fear of the Lord? What is the depth of that brokenness then? And then what truly is the depth of that sorrow? Because brokenness, contrition, and fear of the Lord for someone who is truly genuinely saved and born again 
it's it's not step one, step two, step three. Are you saved, brother? <laughs> no, it's not that. It happens in a fluid motion. Okay? I can explain that to you. But see, if you're not saved, you don't get it. You cannot be truly saved without, with, without having in that salvation fear of the Lord. Because why get saved? Oh, just because you saw the lows, just so you can have your best life now, and then that, and then of course, then you go to uh, devils like Rick Warren and prosperity gospel teaching of how to get money using Christianity. I smell something. I smell something. See, God so loved, past tense, that He gave. Past tense. Loved, gave at Calvary. Have you been there? You can come broken and have contrition, but when it comes to that fear of the Lord, you might call on him even, but it's the fear of the Lord there. If there is no fear of the Lord there at your salvation, you are not saved. You are not saved. And to preach, it's the love of God. The love of God is Christ and Him crucified. The love of God is the fear of the Lord. You're not saved. You're not saved. If there's no fear of the Lord in your salvation, you're not saved. You're not saved. Okay, and, and here's another one that they like to go to, Matthew, chapter five, and they use this to justify their, themselves. And um, you know, we have talked about this at length, and casting pearls before swine. But <laughs> Sermon on the Mount. It's good for our instruction in righteousness, but doctrinally, it's for the kingdom of heaven. Faith is mentioned one time, and it's in the form of a rebuke. His death, burial, and resurrection is never mentioned in the Sermon on the Mount. It's all works. And Matthew chapter 5, verses 43 on to verse 48. The kingdom of heaven is when Jesus Christ as king will be physically, literally sitting on the throne at Jerusalem. We have gone over this a multitude of times. But man's attention span is that of a gnat. So bear with me, brethren. Okay? This is for the kingdom of heaven. And the context of this is within the kingdom of heaven when God himself, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, will be on the earth and those people of the kingdom of heaven or in that time period are going to have to answer to God personally, physically on the judgment seat, at the, not the judgment seat, uh, while he is sitting on the throne in Jerusalem, while he's physically present. Okay? So when we read Matthew chapter 5, verses 43 on to verse 48, instruction and in righteousness. Ah, yes! We love our enemies by telling them the truth, by praying for them, if that they may be broken. Okay? For God's judgment, and God's judgment is not always a death sentence. Okay? But yet it is. Hopefully it's a death to their pride, their self righteousness. But when we read this, Matthew chapter 5, verses 43 on to verse 48. Ye have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thine enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you. That ye may be the children of your Father which is in heaven. And see, at this time, He's, he's offering them the kingdom of heaven. Okay? He's offering them the kingdom of heaven. Okay? You gotta remember that. For he maketh his son, S-U-N, 
to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and on the unjust. For if ye love them which love you, what reward have ye? Do not even the publicans the same? And if ye salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the publicans so? Be ye therefore perfect, even as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Now, for us today, for us today, instruction in righteousness, absolutely. But you got to remember, our Lord said this in the context that, okay, during the kingdom of heaven, you love your enemies by telling them the truth because these people, your enemies, during the kingdom of heaven, they're, they're going to have to deal with Jesus Christ himself physically and personally. Look at him sitting on a throne. You tell, you tell me about the fear of the Lord then there, little boy. Yeah? Yeah? In the kingdom of heaven. When you got to, when, when, when your enemy, you know, you love your enemy. Why? Because they're going to have a big, they, they got bigger things to worry about. They're going to have to go to the Lord Jesus Christ himself on the throne. That's what the context for that is about. But. For us today, and this does see you kind of rightly divide the word of truth. For this, you, you're not getting away from that. You don't rightly divide the word of truth. You you bless your heart. You think that the Sermon on the Mount is doctrine for us today. It's not. Instruction of righteousness, Molicia, brava, yes. Doctrine, no, no, no. Okay. 1 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians, chapter 4, 1 Corinthians, chapter 4, okay, verses 9 on to verse 14, and brethren, but bear with me, okay, bear with me, please, 1 Corinthians, chapter 4, verses 9 on to verse 14, for I think that God has set forth us the apostles last, last, as it were appointed to death. For we are made a spectacle unto the world, and to angels, and to men. We are fools for Christ's sake, but ye are wise in Christ. We are weak, but ye are strong, ye Christians. Yeah. Ye are honorable, but we are despised. Of course, the Christians of today are pretty much honorable. Not all of them, because you look at what happened with the <laughs> Southern Baptist, <laughs> Southern uh, Bathlick thing. And how the Catholics were even, yeah, see, they're just as bad as we are. But see, you got a Christian coming around preaching to you, God loves you. Which, in my experience, most of the atheists that have contacted me and that I've spoke with, even though, even they're like, that doesn't make any sense. Isn't it funny that professing atheists have more sense than some of these Christians who go about preaching, God loves you. Uh, that that's striking, that's striking. But verse eleven, even unto this present hour, we both hunger and thirst, and are naked, and are buffeted naked, and are buffeted, and have no certain dwelling place, and labor, working with our own hands, being reviled, we bless. Oh, thank you for reviling me. For reviling me. No, Lord. Have mercy on them. Break them. They don't know what they're doing. They're, they're in their pride. Please, Lord, slay them. Break them of their pride that they may come to you broken. Being persecuted, we suffer it because we're all who will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Okay? Being defamed, we entreat. <laughs> I, I'm not a Christian, okay? Don't, don't, please, don't confuse me with the little teeny bopper nitwit that <laughs> God loves you that comes from the church buildings. Don't uh, confuse me with the Zichel, King James Bible believing Christians. Don't, don't confuse me with those people, okay? Don't. I'm of the church of God. I'm of the church of the living God. Okay? I'm, 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 I'm not. I'm not. Uh, remember, lost people 
called we the Church of God Christians. Unfortunately, it's stuck and it's not going anywhere. I get that. I'm not okay with it, but I get that. We never called ourselves that. Don't, don't, don't confuse me with one of them. Okay? Being defamed, we entreat. We are made as the filth of the world and are the offscurring of all things unto this day. See, you love your enemy by giving a good witness unto Christ when you are being persecuted. Now, hey, if he's going to attack you and try to kill you, you got a wife, you got little ones, defend yourself. Defend yourself. It, depraved indifference is sin and heresy, which some of these uh, love them into the kingdom, uh, uh, the pacifist um, cowards, you know, ex, uh, you know, escalation of force. Um, if your life is in danger, um, defend yourself, especially if you got a wife, if you got little ones, defend yourself, okay? Defend yourself. But see, we love our enemies by speaking the truth in love. See, perfect love casteth out fear. We're going to look at that. And that perfect love is a love that is willing to tell you the truth no matter how it hurts you. That hopefully it will prick your heart. But see, being truthful in love will also cut the heart. And... The hearts of those who were pricked, Acts chapter 2. Men and brethren, what must we do? After Peter said, it was you who put Christ on the cross. It's your fault. They're, they were pricked. Oh, men and brethren, what must we do? Stephen, ye stiff-necked and uncircumcised and hardened ears, ye always do resist the Holy Ghost. What they do? They stopped their ears, gnashed on him on their, uh, with their teeth. Why? Because they were cut to the heart. Hebrews chapter 4.12. Oh, this is sharper than anything. This is the most, this is the most deadliest of weapons ever on the face of this earth. Because it is a discerner of the mind, of the heart, of the body, of the person, which is a spirit, soul, body. Okay? One second, brethren. Sorry about that, brethren. Yes, we love our enemies by giving them a testimony, a witness of how we live godly according to the scriptures. And we speak to them the truth of the scriptures. That is perfect love. Okay? Perfect love is willing to hurt that, it may, that you may be made better. The heart of the wise is in the house of mourning because by the sadness of the heart the countenance is made better. But the heart of fools is in the house of mirth. That's in the book of Ecclesiastes. Go find it. Okay? But, okay, and they go to about, you know, love, love them into the kingdom. And they, when these people, with their, when they have them, you know, the love of God, preach the love of God. It's the love of God. It's the, love, the love of God is Christ and him crucified. If you don't have the fear of the Lord in your salvation, you're not saved. You're not. Okay? But what does it always, always, always lead to? What does it always, always, always lead into? What does this, this sappy, satanic, God loves you, God's not mad at you. And then when you, you try to, you know, show them, it's like, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. That's not the true love of God. What does it always lead into? Uh, there are two basically well-known verses of Scripture, even unto lost people. John 3, 16, and this one. I'm not going to tell you to start. What is, what is this when you speak the true gospel, the true love of God against this fake, God loves you? I didn't come to the Lord because I was afraid of him sending me to hell. or the, No, because of how much he loved me. Because of John 3.16. And there's no fear of the Lord. How can I love someone that I'm supposed to be afraid of? <laughs> Casting your pearls before a swine, you, you, you have no clue. You have no clue. You're lost. But you came to him because of fleshly things. Not because 
merely, you know, not because it's your fault and you're afraid of going to hell as you should be. You're afraid of him. See, this love gospel that these people are preaching today has no fear of the Lord. Okay? None. None. Thanks to Catholicism, Mystery Babylon, what they've done, you know, to Christianity. Okay? But it always leads to this. Judge not that ye be not judged. Matthew chapter 7, verses 1 on to verse 5. Unfortunately, thanks to Mr. Hetfield, uh, judge not lest ye be judged. It's judge not that ye be not judged. Feel sorry for you, Mr. Hetfield, for where you're going. Judge not that ye be not judged. Don't judge me. Look, we're Christians and we're not. <laughs> it's, and they use this as a defensive mechanism. Why? Don't judge me about my sins. Don't call the light. Get, that, get the King James Version out of my face. I don't want to hear that. Give me the message. God loves me. He's not judging me. Come as I am. He doesn't. He's not mad at me. For with what judgment ye judge, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, it shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest, beholdest thou the mote that is in thy brother's eye, but considerest not the beam that is in thine own eye? Or how wilt thou say to thy brother, Let me pull out the mote out of thine eye, and behold, a beam is in thine own eye? Thou hypocrite. First cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then shalt thou see clearly to cast out the moat out of thy brother's eye. And the argument is, well, we're always going to have a moat in our eye, so you have no right to judge me over anything. Um, <laughs> thou hypocrite. The, the judgment here that our Lord is condemning is not judging first yourself, according to the scriptures, or sin, according to the scriptures. No, it's talking about Romans, uh, Romans chapter 2, Romans chapter 2, you want to know what this is talking about, Romans chapter 2, you get these Christians who say, don't judge, we're not supposed to judge, you're supposed to judge, and see, these Christians who are against the scriptures and be led by the spirit, not don't be bound to a book. The letter kills and blah 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 blah. And you gotta go to their their prophetess to learn. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Romans chapter two, verse seventeen on to verse twenty-four. Behold, thou art called a Jew and restest in the law and makest thy boast of God and knowest His will and approvest the things that are more excellent, being instructed out of the law. And art confident that thou thyself art a guide of the blind, a light of them which are in darkness, an instructor of the foolish, a teacher of babes, which has the form of knowledge and of the truth in the law. Thou therefore which teachest another, teachest thou not thyself? Thou that preachest a man should not steal, dost thou steal? Hypocritical judgment. If I were still a sodomite and preaching to you against sodomy, oh, that would be hypocritical, wouldn't it? If I were a drunkard preaching to you against being a drunkard, that would be hypocritical, wouldn't it? If I were a drug addict speaking to you against taking drugs, that would be hypocritical. The judgment that is being condemned in Matthew chapter 7 and Romans chapter 2 here, this dispensation, okay, is hypocritical judgment. Not that we're not supposed to judge. Satan doesn't want you to judge because he himself is going to be judged by this standard. <clears throat> thou that sayest a man should not commit adultery, dost thou commit adultery? Thou that abhorrest idols, Dost thou commit sacrilege? 
Deck the halls with balls of frolly, frolly, Not yet. Not yet. Thou that makest thy boast of the law, through breaking the law dishonorest thou God. For the name of God is blasphemed against among the Gentiles through you, as it is written. It's talking about hypocritical judgment. Not that you shouldn't judge. God wants you to judge first yourself. But then judge according to what? According to your feelings. According to a spirit that you can't identify because you're not in the scriptures. Or according to uh, a God that appeared to you. Uh-huh. Bless your heart. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, I think... Per but here's another argument, okay? Jude. Jude, right? <laughs> Jude. Verses 21 on to verse 23. Here's another argument, okay? Okay? Keep yourselves in the love of God. See, when you are saved, God's love is for you. When you are not saved, God's love is not for you, but God's wrath is uh, for you. If you reject the true gospel and don't go to him on his terms, but rather you want to boot the door out of the way and climb up some other way, uh, God's wrath is for you. You are a child of wrath. You are a child of disobedience. Okay? But Jude 21 under verse 23. Keep yourselves in the love of God, looking for the mercy of our Lord Jesus Christ unto eternal life. And if some have compassion, making a difference. So that means they can go, uh, and others save with fear, pulling them out of the fire, even hating the garments spotted by the flesh. So does that mean, so what? There are two different gospels, a love gospel and one that's, uh, what is it, fire and brimstone? No. An example, the Philippian jailer who had godly sorrow. Okay. Worldly sorrow leads to death. And did the Philippian jailer kill himself? No. He had godly sorrow. Okay? When someone has true godly sorrow and are at that point and actually are horrified already of going to hell, um, you have compassion. You don't need to, it's like, uh, you know, you're... You, you know the Bible, they say, you know, the Bible says that uh, there's none. I know that. Oh, well, you know, it's your fault. I know, it's my fault. You know, you better uh, get right with him or else. I know, I'm going to hell. Okay. Okay, come here. Okay. Okay, then you go to Romans chapter 10. Okay, it's like, um, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, and call out to the Lord, ask him to forgive you, he'll save you. To see, someone who, is already, who already has that, in that one fell swoop, um, brokenness, contrition, and fear of the Lord, compassion, okay? But there are those out there that you have to smack them hard, hit them hard with the sword, see? Okay? That's what this is talking about. Okay? Not that you, you know, uh, pussyfooted around. No, 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 no. Because you read the scriptural account of the true God, our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ. Our Lord Jesus Christ did a whole lot of this. A whole lot of that. I guess got some something on the camera. Excuse me. <laughs> but he did. He did a whole lot of this. Pointing. Confronting. Okay? One thing thou lackest. One thing ye lack. Okay? Okay? The gospel is that Christ died at death for our sins according to the scriptures. And that he was buried and rose again the third day according to the scriptures. And that blood he shed on the cross is the payment for our sins. Okay? 
and repentance toward him, repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? That's the gospel. That is the gospel. And that involves fear. If there's no fear in your salvation, when the Lord saved you, apparently, you're not saved. I'm sorry to break that to you, but somebody has to. You're a false convert. You're not saved. If there's no fear of the Lord at your salvation, but just oh, so enamored because of the sappy, sugary love, and there's no fear of his judgment, you're not saved. You're not saved at all. You're lost. John, first John, chapter four. Oh yeah, oh yeah. First John, chapter four, verses seven on to verse eleven. This is written to who? The Church of the Living God, addressing who? Those who are saved, born again, converted, new creatures in Christ Jesus. Okay. John, 1 John 4, verses 7 on verse 11. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God. And everyone that loveth is born of God, and knoweth God. He that loveth not, knoweth not God, for God is love. Okay? And see, what these heretics like to do is call sin love. Okay, and they go to um, 1 Corinthians chapter 13 and they call charity love. Charity is not love, okay, nor is charity liberty. Beware of pompous, arrogant little boys who right in front of you say, Yea, hath God said, and say that charity is actual, actually liberty and liberty is charity. No, they're two different things, okay. Beware of devils like that. Okay? But he that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. God so loved. This love is in context to those who are saved. Okay? You're not saved. Want God's love? It's the cross. You got to go there on his terms. Broken of your self righteousness. Godly sorrow is your fault. And you better be afraid of him because he, he's going to send you to hell unless you get right with him. But if you have those, think you have those two and not the third, see, those three things have to be there in order to be truly saved. And easy believism wants to omit almost all three of them. Okay? Yeah. In this was manifest the love of God toward us because that God sent his only begotten son into the world that we might live through him. The we, us, is those who are already saved. Okay? Herein is love. Not that we loved God. Loved God. Past tense. But that he... Don't look at me. Look at the scriptures. Loved God past tense, us, and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins. He loved us by giving Christ. God shall provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. Okay? Beloved, if God so loved us, Look at the, now look at the use of the word love here. In verse 11. Behold, beloved, if God so loved us, past tense, so ought, so ought also we all, <laughs> we ought also to love, present tense, one another. Context. Those who are of the church of the living God. There are those out there who I believe are truly my brother, but I do not like them. There are those who are truly my brother, and they do not like me. But I love them, because why? 
we have the same father. I might not like you, but I love you. If someone I do not like, who is my brother, would come to me. I've said this to you before. So, Brad, I need your help. Pray for me. Or Brad, can, can, can I stay with you for a couple days? Or Brad, uh, or whatever. So, okay, I might not like this man, but that he's my brother. I love him. I, I'm going to do for him because he is my brother. I might not like you, but I love you. Okay? Okay? We are to love those who are of our father, our brothers, our sisters. Okay? I might not like what you're doing. I might not like your opinion. But if you are truly my brother or sister, I love you. Okay? That is the context. Okay? And we love those who are without, who are not saved by living according to the example of scripture and giving them the scripture, you know, speaking the truth in love, okay? Now, skipping a little bit here to verses 17 on to verse 21, herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no Fear and love, but perfect love casteth out fear. So, okay, and now these people go, see, we're not supposed to fear the Lord. Oh, uh, really? Really? Well, let, let's finish this really quickly, okay? Um, what, what fear is this talking about? Um, holy place here, uh, Proverbs 29. Proverbs 29. What fear is this talking about? Fear of the wicked. What is the fear of the wicked, Brad? Proverbs 29. One verse. 25. Hmm. The fear of man. The fear of flesh. And Satan savoreth the things that be of man, not the things that be of God. And Satan is cursed to eat the dust, and man is dust. Okay? The fear of man bringeth a snare. But whoso putteth, putteth his trust in the Lord shall be safe. This is talking about the fear of man, not the fear of the Lord. Oh, don't worry. I'm going to prove that to you. Okay? <laughs> there is no fear in love. But perfect love casteth out fear. Perfect love is a perfect love is a love to tell you one thing you lack. You're going to hell. You're in sin. You are... <clears throat> you, you are... <clears throat> even better. I am... <clears throat> wrong. Perfect love is love that's willing to tell you the truth no matter the cost. And these... God loves you. It was the love of God that did not any fear. No, there was no fear in my salvation. I, you're not saved, dear friend. You're not saved. The fear here that is being talked about is the fear of man. When we have perfect love, but the, you, you know how we read in uh, Luke chapter 12? Okay, verse 5. Uh, let's read Luke chapter 12, verse 4. Okay? Luke chapter 12, verse 4. And I say unto you, my friends, be not afraid of them that kill the body, and after that have no more that they can do. Oh, the Jesuits, they will not forgive nor forsake. They kill you, they're going after your parents. But yeah, uh, after they kill your body, that's all they can do. But I forewarn you whom ye shall fear. Fear him which after he hath killed hath power to cast into hell. Yea, I say unto you, fear him. There is no fear in love, but perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Verse 19. We love him because he first loved, past tense, us. 
We love him because he first loved, past tense, us. And how can you love him unless you get the true gear? See, you not having the fear of the Lord and calling yourself saved, that there was no fear of God in your salvation, um, the Lord saved you from hell to go to be with the devil and his angels. You don't know what true love is. Because the Lord delivered us from the wrath to come. Philippians, first, uh, uh, first Thessalonians chapter 5. Okay, We're not appointed unto wrath, but to be redeemed. Okay, We're not appointed to wrath. He has saved us from wrath. Hell is wrath. Okay, is the just reward for those who have lived ungodly who are not saved. Okay, And if there's no fear... In your salvation how can you love him who saved you from hell oh it comes as an afterthought no you're not saved the fear of the Lord in your salvation has to be there if it's not dear friend you need to examine yourself whether or not you are truly saved and if you are there's no fear of twisting this you're not saved you are not saved, dear friend. Okay? All right? And, of course, Isaiah chapter 8. Isaiah chapter 8. Isaiah chapter 8, verses 11 on to verse 14. Isaiah chapter 8, verses 11 on to verse 14. For the Lord spake thus to me with a strong hand, and instructed me that I should not walk in the way of this people, saying, Say ye not a confederacy to them to whom this people say shall say a confederacy. Neither fear ye their fear, the fear of man, the fear of flesh, nor be afraid. Sanctify the Lord of hosts himself, and let him be your fear, and let him be your dread, and he shall and he shall be for a sanctuary. But for a stone of stumbling and for a rock of offense to both the houses of Israel, and for a gin and for a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And you want to, you want to hear something interesting? Proverbs chapter 19. Proverbs 19 verse 6. Check this out. See, a lot of these people, love me, God loves you. I came to him because of love. Uh, you came to him because you saw the loaves and not truly because you had any fear of the Lord. Why get saved if not to be with the Lord and to escape hell? Oh, that you might have your best life now, that you might have the purpose-driven life. Yeah, the purpose-driven life. That's what that book by that sick devil is. And this young man... Cody um, Licentious, I'll call him, <laughs> uh, promoting, uh, yeah, the Purpose Driven Life by Rick Warren. Son, hey, homie, you're not saved. No fear of the Lord. At your salvation, you're not saved. You're not saved. Okay? But Proverbs 19, verse 6 Many will entreat the favor of a prince. Yeah. And every man is a friend to him that giveth gifts. You saw the loaves. Oh, look at how, look at how smiley and happy he is. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Proverbs 20. Check this out. Verse 6. Okay. Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness faithful man who can find and these love men to the kingdom these ecumenical types you know I, I, I'm not as bad as so and so I see I, I'm a Christian I'm not judging you then you bring up you know true scriptural repentance well I'm and it always comes to this you're judging me don't judge me or I'm better than so and so I'm not that bad yeah most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness, but a faithful man who can find? Ready for this? 
Proverbs chapter 21, verse 6. Huh? The getting of treasures by a lying tongue is a vanity tossed to and fro of them that seek death. Oh, you want all the good things. You want just the loaves that the Lord offers. Not that he is the God who's going to save you from hell. Not that you are to fear him, but that you're going to go up and treat the Lord as your homie with a bro hug. You poor, poor, sad man. Any of you, any of you who preach this heresy of the love gospel, Lord rebuke you. Lord rebuke you. And, okay, now, a Second Corinthians, now, we're not supposed to fear the Lord. There's no fear uh, in the Lord and salvation. Oh, that's only after salvation. Oh, well, um, okay. Second Corinthians chapter 5. Second Corinthians chapter 5, verses 10 on to verse 15. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ. Now, not all of us is going to appear before the judgment seat of Christ. But Brad, that's why uh, yeah, the, the context, this is talking to the church of the living God. Okay? For those of us who are saved. So, we who are saved are going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Uh, read 1 Corinthians chapter 3. Okay? Talks about that. Okay? Do that on your own time. Okay? So if we who are saved are going to stand before the, uh, the Lord at the judgment seat of Christ, where are the lost going to stand before? Before the Lord at the great white throne of judgment. See, but the point is, whether you're lost or saved, you're going to give an account of yourself to God. Where is it going to be? At the great white throne for the lost or at the judgment seat of Christ for those who are saved? Hmm? Oh, but you're not supposed to fear the Lord uh, upon uh, at your salvation or as a <laughs> Christian yeah yeah there's no fear of, of the Lord there at all in your salvation or you're a professing Christian and there's you're not saved there's there's it's impossible it's impossible For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, that every one may receive the things done in his body according to that he hath done, whether it be good or bad. Now, we know, we of the church of the living God, because it's written for us in the record that God gave of his son, okay? We know because we have the scriptures that everyone is going to give an account of themselves to God, whether you are lost or whether you are, you are of the church of God. You are going to give an account of yourself to God, no matter where you are. Okay? All right? Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord, we pro persuade men. Look, you're going to have to give an account of yourself to God. And uh, <coughs> if you're not saved, you're going to stand before him at the great white throne of judgment. And most likely, you're going to be cast into the lake of fire. Hell! But see, Satan and his Christianity doesn't want anything to do with hell because that's where he's going. So, Christ warned us of hell. Knowing therefore the terror of the Lord, we persuade men. But... We are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences. Now, see, verse 11 right there is parallel unto what we looked at in Jude, okay? Of some have uh, compassion making a difference, and uh, others safe with fear, pulling them out of the fire, okay? How so? Knowing the terror of the Lord, that we're all going to give an account of ourselves to God, saved and lost, okay? But we are made manifest unto God, and I trust also are made manifest in your consciences uh, by, our, by our walking, adhering, living godly according to the scriptures. Okay? But knowing the terror of the Lord, the fear of the Lord, 
Terror and fear are two different things. Yes, but see, you're going to stand before the Lord and give an account for yourself. And if you're saved, you're going to give an account of yourself at the judgment seat of Christ. Your rewards, uh, your works will be tried uh, because there are those, we've talked about this before, uh, there are those who will go to heaven who our Lord will be ashamed of for eternity, but yet he'll, be, he'll let them in, okay? Because God is not a liar. But then again, there are so many out there who say, Lord, Lord, but yet he doesn't know them. And you're going to go before the great white throne of judgment and be cast into the lake of fire. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord. For we commend not ourselves again unto you, but give you occasion to glory on our behalf, that ye may have somewhat to answer them which glory in appearance and not in heart. Just like these big smile, easy believers and love them into the God, love them into the kingdom people. They glory in their flesh, not in heart. Because their heart has not been truly broken. There's no fear of the Lord there. It's not, it's not a truly broken heart. Come on now. Because you're still number one right there. For whether we be, be beside ourselves, it is to God. Or whether we be sober, it is for your cause. For the love of Christ constraineth us. Yes, the love of Christ. To warn. We love our enemies by warning them. Hey, 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 hello, hi. You're running for a cliff. Here, let me, let me. I, 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 I'm, I'm God loves me. I'm saved because I believe. Uh, but, uh, but, uh, but wait a minute, what about, you know, what about repentance? Repentance is going from unbelief to belief. Wait, 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 time out, time out, time out, okay? Uh, you're a sin We're all sinners. What about you personally? We're all sinners. What about you personally? You know, Jeffrey Dahmer and King Nebuchadnezzar are in heaven, and you think that I'm lost, and those, I'm, I'm not as bad as those. Not broken. But see, the love of Christ constraineth us to warn the lost. See, you get it? Because we thus judge. Oh, boy. We thus judge. Really? Oh, wow, you don't say. That if one died for all, then we're all dead. And that he died for all, yes, he did. But see, not everybody, see, there are so many who are booting the door out of the way and climbing up another way when God's way of salvation is simple, but very specific. Don't come as yourself. Come as a broken, broken, sniveling piece of snot, almost wetting yourself in terror, grief-stricken for what you did to him and terrified of his judgment. That is the requirement for him to have mercy on you. And to save you. But if that's not there, you boot the door, and Christ is the door, and climb up some other way, you're not saved. But see, yeah, it's there for everybody. The cross is there for everybody. But not everybody is going to go on his terms. Okay? Not everybody is going to go on his terms. That's just, that's just the way it is, dear friend. And he, and that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. Knowing that for the terror of the Lord. Oh, 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 we're not done. Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians chapter 5, verses 15 on to verse 21. Okay? Saved people. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time, because the days are evil. Wherefore be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things, Good, bad, indifferent, the good, the bad, the ugly. Yeah. Giving thanks always for all things unto God 
and the Father, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Paul never talked about it. Yes, he did. Everything Paul talked about was based upon the fear of the Lord. Okay? Oh, oh, but wait, 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 wait. Oh, wait, wait, wait. We're not done. We're not done. Philippians chapter 2, verses 12 on to verse 16. Wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. We save ourselves. We got to work to Satan. No. If you are truly saved, born again, converted, God lives within you. You are sealed. The Holy Ghost. Okay? And the Lord is that spirit. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. Okay? Uh, you are sealed unto the day of redemption. So, the Lord has put himself within you. You are to work out himself. He that is in you is supposed to come out. And you're supposed to do that with what? Fear and trembling. Okay? For it is God which worketh in you, both to will and to do of his good pleasure. Do all things without murmurings and disputings, that ye may be blameless and harmless, the sons of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation. God bless America, huh? Yeah. Among whom ye shine as lights in the world. Literally shine. So the lost people, like Barry Gordy's The Last Dragon, your body shines and they... Cuckoo! Cuckoo! <laughs> yeah. 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 See what them devils do to you, man? Yeah. Yeah. Holding forth the word of life, that I may rejoice in the day of Christ, that I have not run in vain, neither labored in vain. Yea. And if I be offered upon the sacrifice and service of your faith, eh, I joy and rejoice with you all. For the same cause also do ye joy and rejoice with me. But I trust in the Lord Jesus to send Timotheus shortly unto you, that I also may be of good comfort when I know your state. For I have no man like-minded who will naturally care for your state. For all seek their own. Because God is your, your God is your belly. You came to the Lord because you only saw the loaves, not considered that he is truly God and is going to rescue you from hell. There was no fear of the Lord in your salvation. You're not saved. For all seek their own, not the things which are of Christ Jesus, which are Jesus Christ, excuse me. Okay? And 1 Peter chapter 4. 1 Peter chapter 4. 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 17 on to verse 24. 1 Peter chapter 4, what, what did I write? <laughs> verses 17 on to verse 19, excuse me. Judgment begins where? With us first. Okay? You judge yourself according to the scriptures. Then judge others according to the scriptures. But it always begins with yourself. For the time has come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? What will it be for the lost? Or those of you Christians who God loves you, you know, you're here, you're saved because you, you know, you came to Christ because of all the, the sappy love and there's no fear? Yeah. Yeah. And if the righteous scarcely be saved, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? Wherefore, let them that suffer according to the will of God commit the keeping of their souls to him in well-doing as unto a faithful creator. And of course, 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 13 on to verse 21. Wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober, and hope to the end, for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, not fashioning yourselves according to the former lusts in your ignorance, but as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy. That means being other than the world. You know? Okay? Don't look like the world. 
Don't be like the world. And see, Christianity, be like the world to win the world. Yeah. But as he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation, because it is written, Be ye holy, for I am holy. And if ye call on the Father, who without respect of persons judgeth according to every man's work, pass the time of your sojourning here in fear. And God is not a respecter of persons. Unless, of course, you come from the streets. Unless, of course, you are of ham. Unless, of course, God appeared to you personally. Then apparently God is a respecter of persons, right? <laughs> For as much as ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained before the foundation of the world, but was manifest in these last times for you, who by him do believe in God, that raised him up from the dead, and gave him glory, that your faith and hope might be in your belief. In God. And another one, and, 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 and like I said, brethren, okay, we, you know this, we've been through this before, we know this, okay? But <laughs> Ezekiel, totally different dispensation, totally different dispensation, but uh, it, it drives me, you don't want to bang my head against the wall when people quote this, uh, okay? Ezekiel chapter 18, verses 23 on to verse 32. You know, unless you repent, and like I said, salvifically, you're not repenting of your sins. You're repenting of yourself. And if there's no fear, see, if there's no fear, then why repent of yourself? See, you go to the Lord because of all the love. You're not repenting of yourself. There's no brokenness of your self-righteousness. You're just flabbergasted, overwhelmed at all the love, but yet you're not dealing with the brokenness. That's why you can have, um, you can have, what well, you know, somewhat of a brokenness, right? Right? Call it maybe, maybe even legitimately, even legitimate godly sorrow, is it? But yet you get so close, but not have that fear of the Lord? Uh huh. Uh uh. Unless you repent. You shall all likewise perish. And it's not, you, repent of all your sins. So, and what about holiness? Repent of all your sins. Repent of them. And God will grant you repentance. That's Calvinist. That's Lordship salvation. Ezekiel chapter 18, verses 23, unto the close of the chapter. Yet ye say, the way, of the, uh, the way of the Lord is not equal. Hear now, O house of Israel, is not my way equal? Are not your ways unequal? Different dispensation, where it was faith and works, okay? But people will go to here. Because yes, God delighteth in mercy. God would rather have you saved than to put you in hell because you reject the gospel. But when a righteous man turneth away from his righteousness and committeth iniquity and dieth in them, and dieth in them, for his iniquity that he hath done shall he die. Again, when the wicked man turneth away from his wickedness that he hath committed, and doeth that which is lawful and right, he shall save his soul alive. He shall save his soul alive. Faith and works, different dispensation. You can be saved of the church of the living God and live like the devil and still go to hell. But for eternity, God is going to be ashamed of you and you will be branded with that stigma. And you're okay with that? Yeah, right. Because he considereth and turneth away from all his transgressions that he hath committed, he shall surely live, he shall not die. Yet, saith the house of Israel, the way of the Lord is not equal. It's not fair. O house of Israel, 
Are not my ways equal? Are not your ways unequal? Therefore I will judge you, O house of Israel, everyone according to his ways, saith the Lord God. Repent and turn yourselves from all your transgressions, so iniquity will not be your ruin. Different dispensation, okay? Like I said, today, okay, you couldn't turn away from all your stuff even if you tried. And see, under the law, the law was there to bring you, to, to eventually bring you onto Christ. The law was there to show you that you can't do it, okay? It was faith and works in this dispensation. But the point is, you are turning from something, yes. And repentance is also equates with sorrow because the Lord didn't need to repent. He wasn't a, a sinner, of course not. But it repented him that he had made man upon earth and it grieved him. So you see, true repentance have, has grief, has grief, sorrow, okay? Cast away from you all your transgressions whereby ye have transgressed and make you a new heart and a new spirit. For why will ye die, O house of Israel? See, different dispensation. So when you try to quote this to me, uh, dude, this is a different dispensation. Okay? Instruction in righteousness is this. Okay? For I have no pleasure in that in the death of him that dieth, saith the Lord. Wherefore, turn yourselves and live ye. Repent. Turn from your self-righteousness. See, the law of him into the kingdom doesn't deal with the self-righteousness. It doesn't. If it does, glibly. Because all these love him into the kingdom, uh, the love gospel nonsense... When you press these people, it always comes to don't judge or I'm better than that. I'm not as bad as every single one. Okay? Every single one. This young Cody, if I would have, and I'm, I'm not going to. If I were to press him, I know. He already exhibited. I'm better than you because I came from the streets. So I have no room to talk because I'm not on your level, right? <laughs> yeah, not saved, boy, homie, bruh, you're not saved. And you're promoting Rick Warren? You're definitely a Christian. But see, it's repentance toward God and faith toward our Lord Jesus Christ. The turning that you're turning from today is not from your sin. This different dispensation, faith and works. Faith and works. Continual animal sacrifice. We couldn't do that. Uh, yeah, he tells them to do that under the law. Okay? And when they sinned, they had to go kill an animal and uh, give it to the priest to offer blood. Okay? Today, the repentance towards salvation is repenting of your self-righteousness. And hey, I'm saved because God loved me. Your self-righteousness is still there. You must be some, there must be something good in you in order for God to save you because God loved you so much, right? Please, boy, please. Please, you're not broken. You're not saved. Okay? <laughs> and, and see, it's Romans chapter 1. Brethren, okay, brethren, bear with me. Brethren, okay, we, we, it's like bread. We, we, I know. Brethren, you're not the, you're actually the minority who apparently watch these videos. Okay, you are. Those who are of the church of the living God are the minority of those who watch these videos. <laughs> apparently, Okay. Romans chapter 1, verses 28. You want to know what this is? You want to know what this is? Romans chapter 1, verses 28 on to verse 32. God loves you. God's not mad at you. So God loved me, so there must be something good in me. Oh, yeah, we're all sinners. Yeah, you, you know you're not good. You know you deserve to go to hell. You know you're rotten. And it's your, well, I'm, not, I'm not that bad. There was something in me that God loved to, to save me. I must be worse. That's what the love gospel does. It doesn't deal with the self-righteousness. Kind of like easy believism. Kind of like, um, you know, the three C's. Catholicism, Calvinism, and Charismatics. 
and even uh, Romans chapter 1, verses 28 on to the close of the chapter. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a reprobate mind to do those things which are not convenient. Being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate. <laughs> uh, debate. What do debates profit? They don't. I'm not debating anybody. Thank you. I've been requested now to debate, especially about the Godhead. Uh, and these people use the playground mentality. Well, you won't debate because you know. I said, no, yeah. Oh, uh, isn't it time for milk and cookies and for you to take a nap, little child? Huh? Did you just, did the, the isn't the bell for recess going to ring soon? Huh? Huh? Grow up. Yeah, but, yeah. Full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, malignity, malignity, shh, whispers. Backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, proud. You're not from the streets, so you can't talk to me. <laughs> okay, boy. <laughs> Good luck at the great white throne of judgment, kid. Proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, without understanding, covenant breakers, without natural affection, implacable, unmerciful. Misery loves company. Who knowing the, the judgment of God, that they which commit such things are worthy of death, not only do the same, but have pleasure in them that do them. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? And of course, 1 Corinthians chapter 2. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. See, these Christians who are saved because God, you know, God loves them. Uh, I'm mean, so overwhelmed with the mushy gushy love. You're not saved. But see, trying to reach these people. First Corinthians chapter two, verses twelve on to verse sixteen. Now we have not received the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God, that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God, which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual. The spirit that is within you. Spiritual things. The scriptures. And see, the fear of the Lord at salvation. There's no fear of the Lord. And trying to explain this to a, one of these lovey-dovey, sugar-coated, just eh, love gospel people. Um, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Foolishness unto him. How can we love someone we're afraid of? Be the truth of God is foolishness unto these people, brethren. The truth is foolishness unto you. How can you love someone you're afraid of? How can you not fear someone that you love? In order to truly love God, we, we already looked in uh, 1 John 4. That's in context of uh, the fear of the, wor uh, the world, the fear of man, not the fear of the Lord. Um, <laughs> the fear of the Lord is foolishness unto you. It means you're a natural man, you're not saved. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual... Oh, judgeth all things. Yet he himself is judged of no man. Why? Because the fear of man bringeth a snare. For who hath known the mind of the Lord? But he, that he may instruct him. But we have the mind of Christ. And of course, 1 Corinthians chapter 11. Verses 31 on to verse 32. But see this judgment thing. We need to begin judging ourselves. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 31, on to verse 32. For this, um, for, if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. The, the, the world's going to judge us. What does this mean? For if we would judge ourselves, we would not be judged. 
to deliver such a one unto Satan for the destruction of the flesh that the spirit may be saved? What is that? What, what, what do you mean, Brad? Uh, judge yourself according to the scriptures. If you judge yourself according to the scriptures, then hopefully the Lord won't have to get involved and chastise you to bring you under his judgment and chastisement, which hurts! Oh, oh boy! But when we are judged, judged, who judges us? The Lord. Okay? But when we are judged by the Lord, we are chastened of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Oh, boy. So, see, we judge ourselves daily. How? By our feelings. By our spirit, we can't. <laughs> oh. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, just one verse. 2 Corinthians chapter 13, just one verse. Examine yourselves. Whether ye be in the faith. Prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves? How that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be reprobates? You say you're a Christian. Eh. You say you're a Christian. You say you're saved. And you came to the Lord because the love of God, which is Christ in him crucified. But God loved me, so, loves me so much. He's not mad at me. Uh, yeah, but if you reject the true gospel, what you are doing, you, you're a child of wrath and you're going to hell. Yeah. But how can I fear someone that I'm supposed to love? So the fear of the Lord is foolishness unto you. You're not saved. You're not saved. You said you come to the Lord because of, you, you didn't come to him because of any fear. There was no fear in your salvation. But you just came because of, um, you need to truly examine yourself whether or not you are truly saved. And I'm telling you, I'm telling you, if there is no fear of the Lord when he saved you, you're not saved. You are deceived. You're deceived, man. You're deceived. Second Peter chapter two. Second Peter chapter two, verses nine and ten. The Lord knoweth how to deliver the godly out of temptations and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. But chiefly them that walk after the flesh and the lust of uncleanness and despise government. Uh, the government here is being, what kind of government is this? Uh, we are to hate what is evil and to cleave to that which is good. And we have our, our gov government here in America is run by the Jesuits. This is talking about self-government. Okay? This is talking about self-government. Okay? Presumptuous are they. Self-willed. They are not afraid to speak evil of dignities. Skipping down to verses 18 and on to verse 19. For, while, for when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lusts of the flesh. God loves you. God's not mad at you. God, no, God, there's no fear. You, you know, you don't need to fear the Lord. He's your big, he's your father. He's your daddy. You're going to give him a bro hug, yo, in heaven. <laughs> for when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lusts of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that were clean escaped from them who live in error. Well, they promised them liberty. They themselves are the servants of corruption, from, uh, for of whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought in bondage.
First Timothy chapter 12 on verse 17 and we'll be done. And I thank Christ Jesus our Lord, who hath enabled me, for he, put, for he counted me faithful, putting me into the ministry, which was before a blasphemer, and a persecutor, and injurious. But I obtained mercy because I did it ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord was exceeding abundant with faith and love, which is in Christ Jesus. This is a faithful saying and worthy of all acceptation that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am chief. I'm worse than he is. Yeah. Howbeit for this cause I obtain mercy, that in me first Jesus Christ might shew forth all longsuffering for a pattern to them which should hereafter believe on him to life everlasting. Love gospel, the ecumenical, love them into the kingdom. God's not mad at you. God loves you. Um, that's, that's the doctrine of devils. That's the gospel of Satan. Uh, the gospel of that man of sin, the son of perdition, inaccurately referred to as the Antichrist. Okay? Um, if there is no fear, if there was no fear when the Lord saved you, you're not saved. How can ye believe? Those who seek honor one from another and seek not the honor that come from God only. This was not the video that I had intended to make today. But um, it is what it is. So It's going to be it. If this video offends you, I'm good. Get a, take offense. Take, uh, take an offense and a gate. But you need to consider... without any fear of the Lord how can you love God why get saved for your best life now you're going after the Lord then for all the wrong reasons and you're not truly broken because if the fear of the Lord is foolishness unto you then that means you're a natural man not saved unregenerate The love of God is Christ and Him crucified. Please consider these things. So, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. God's timing is perfect. God's timing is absolutely perfect. Thank you. Thank you for those of you who pray for us. Thank you for all of you who help us. We need your prayers. We're not out of the woods yet. We don't know about next month. We don't know about tomorrow. But today, right now, this is the day that the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord hath made, that the Lord hath made. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord hath made, that the Lord hath made. This is the day that the Lord hath made. This is the day that the Lord hath made. This is the day, this is the day that the Lord hath made. Sorry. Thank you for watching this if you do. We love you, and we'll see you in the next video.